Well, hello again. Thanks for tuning in this week to another broadcast of our communication here through Aviano Baptist Church Facebook page. I'm Gary Preston. If we haven't communicated before, either by email or you didn't listen last week, I'm the interim pastor here for the next 90 days as Pastor Barry is in the States with Jeannie for her upcoming surgery. I hope that we would have met personally by now, but as you understand, with the coronavirus situation being what it is, especially here in Italy with the restrictions that we are under, we have to do this uh, virtual broadcast rather than meeting on Sundays. I hope that changes soon, but until then, we want to be under the restrictions, of course, of our local host country and government, and also those guidelines that have been given to us by the U.S. military base. So I look forward to meeting you personally. My wife and Suzanne and I have been here for now just over a week, and we are adjusting, as you are, to the restrictions here as we confront this coronavirus. I did want to remind you, though, as uh, many of you have already heard from our deacons here at the church, I encourage you to continue to connect with one another in your home groups. I know you're, some of you are even using different uh, broadcast methods whether it be uh, Google or Zoom or uh, other methods, Facebook as well, but the video capabilities to connect with one another. I want to encourage you to do that. If we can be of help to you in any way personally, uh, you can email or call the church office. You can email me. It's uh, pastor at avianobaptist.church. Those emails come directly to me and I'll be in, could be in response to you uh, and connect with you as well. So we don't want you to feel isolated from your church family during this time. If we can be of help in any way, please let us know. And also I encourage you to stay connected uh, to your home groups uh, as you go through these uncertain days. You know, we talked about various ways that we as a church can be connected and many of our opportunities to meet one another personally have been canceled and put on hold. But we are available and we are encouraging you to do that remotely as you're able to do so. I would also encourage you to stay close to one another in prayer and in God's word as you read that. And I've been praying for the church daily and both Suzanne and I have. And we are really praying Psalm 91 over you and over the church family. I shared a little bit about that with you last week. If you haven't read Psalm 91, I would encourage you to do so. It can be a great encouragement to you and help. Maybe you're fearful or have some anxiety during this time. Psalm 91, I think, will put your heart at peace and give you rest that God is still in control and he's working out his plan even in this time of uncertainty and unexpected um, events. In fact, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today in, in this broadcast. You know, a friend of ours sent us a message recently uh, she was uh, astounded that churches were not, being asked not to meet here in Italy and uh, being Catholic as she is. She was especially surprised that even the Pope didn't give his usual address live in St. Peter's Square last week, nor this week. And he'll be doing that remotely as well over the next few weeks. And she was wondering, how in the world does the church do its work and be the church when it can't even be allowed to meet together? And why would Italy do such a thing? She was astounded and was encouraging or asking questions about how we're doing with all that, knowing that we're here as an interim pastor. Maybe you've wondered that as well. How does the church do the church work when it can't meet and can't be together as it normally is? What's God want us to do during this time? And for some, that's brought a, a great deal of uncertainty. And they're wondering what do we do as a church? But I want to encourage us today. There's a good answer to that. Uh, and it really comes from Jesus himself. In fact, when Jesus was here on earth, he recognized that there would be times of uncertainty, battles in life that challenge our faith, challenge our relationship with God, challenge us as a church, his body. And if anything's certain in this coronavirus outbreak, it's that it isn't catching Jesus by surprise. God and is not in heaven wondering, what do I do now? Jesus isn't next to the throne of his father, wringing his hands, saying, 
Uh, what do we do now? How do we respond to this? He's not caught off, by, caught off guard by these things. In fact, Jesus gave us some encouraging words to help us during times like this. How we get through these unexpected situations. Today I want us to talk a little bit about that and share some thoughts with you that I hope will be an encouragement to you. In John, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, Jesus said this in verse 33. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. It's true that as followers of Jesus, the church, we, those who follow him, are members of his family, we live in this constant tension between unexpected troubles and the reality of following Jesus, our King, who can lead us to victory because he has accomplished victory in us through his life. I want to unpack that promise from Jesus just a little bit in John 16, 33. He says, first there, he says, we can have peace. I'll tell you, this last week, I needed that reassurance. About midweek, I'm wondering, God, why have you brought us here? We're here and we're restricted to, in our movement. We've only met personally four people in, a, in the church. We've had contact with some, of course, remotely and on the internet, but God, why are we here? Well, what are we supposed to be doing? And so I was a little bit troubled by that. I didn't feel like we were serving the way we anticipated to be serving or connecting or shepherding the church. And then I read that verse again. Jesus said, in me you have peace. Peace. Peace that guards our hearts and minds. That's biblical peace. That's the peace he gives us. Peace that conquers our fears. Peace that uh, helps us uh, to lie down and rest even when things around us are out of control. God's peace is not dependent upon our individual circumstances, what's going on externally. We can have God's peace even in the midst of unexpected times like coronavirus. And Jesus said that those very words he said, I've told you this, that in me you may have peace. It's also interesting that he links our peace to its source. It's not just something we conjure up or uh, hope for. The source of our peace, he says, is in him. In him we have peace. That means in a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, we can find peace. That's the great news of the Bible. The book of Romans chapter 5 says, Now therefore we have peace with God. I hope you know that peace. Peace that comes through a personal relationship with Him. As you place your faith in Him, as you receive Him into your life, as you become one who's a follower of Jesus, doing life His way. And so I ask myself, Am I using these unexpected events with the coronavirus to, uh, to live close to him, to walk in his peace, to experience his presence in new and special ways? I hope you're doing the same thing. Even though you may not have the usual schedule, now I su suppose that you have more free time than you normally have in your routines. Your kids are home from school, but there are times when you don't have to run the carpool. You don't have to pick them up for their various activities or take them somewhere. You have time to listen to God, to spend time reflecting on His peace and abiding in Him. I hope you're taking opportunity to draw closer to Him. And as you do that, experiencing His peace. And that's important because He says, I want you to know, take heart. I have overcome the world, Jesus said. And so our victory and our peace during this time is not something we conjure up. It's something we receive from Jesus himself because he has overcome the world. He is the overcomer. And therefore, in the book of Romans, it says that we are overcomers. Those of us who have a relationship to him 
are overcomers. We, in fact, we are more than conquerors, the Bible says. Why is that important to know? Because that's how we find peace in our hearts. You know, the coronavirus will not diminish the work and the effectiveness of God's people, of the church. It doesn't curtail God's work in our lives or through our lives. It will only serve to be the platform for the ongoing work of the church because he has overcome, he has conquered already. We can be the hands and feet of Jesus even during these uncertain times as we be the church. We may not meet together as the church, but we are still the church of Jesus Christ. We're still God's people. We still press forward and continue on. And I hope that we discover in, in new ways during this unexpected tribulation and time of the coronavirus, that that becomes an unexpected opportunity to experience God's peace and express it to others. And so the work of the church continues, even when we can't meet together on Sunday, at least for a while, because Jesus has overcome the world, even the coronavirus, and he remains the conqueror, the overcomer, and he gives us that power, that victory in our own lives and through our own lives and through the church. And so I want to encourage you, watch and pray for opportunities to be the hands and feet of Jesus to your family, to your spouse, to your friends, to your colleagues, to your neighbors. I hope every day you pray, God, give me this, the spirit of over, an overcomer today. Even in these unexpected times, I want to be one who walks close with you, who lives in your peace, and it becomes your hands and feet to a world that doesn't know that peace, to friends and neighbors, co-workers, who are seek, seek, uh, searching and seeking that peace. And you ask God, God, open my eyes, tune me in to those around me who need to see and hear of your peace. And then ask yourself, maybe if you need extra support, ask yourself, how can I rally my family, my friends, my cold brothers and sisters, maybe your home group around you to pray for you and to pray for them. I hope that you're tuning in on the opportunities when your home group meets together remotely through uh, the Facebook group or through a live feed. Tune in and encourage one another and pray together and share your thoughts and encouragement with each other. If there's a special need that you have any, during any of this time, I want to encourage you again to contact the church office, contact me directly. We would love to pray for you and encourage you and walk with you during this time. You see, the church will be the church even during uncertain times, unexpected tr trials and tribulations because Jesus gives us his peace and he's overcome these things. And so I I'm privileged to be a part of this with you. I know Pastor Barry and Jeannie are praying for the church here every day as we pray for them as well. And we want to walk with one another and encourage one another and see how God continues to use Aviano Baptist Church in this community to show people that being a follower of Jesus does make a difference in our lives. It makes a difference in how we confront unexpected times and it makes a difference in how we walk with others through this time as well. So God bless you as you continue to persevere, as you continue to draw close to him, as you continue to allow him to do his good work, even in these unexpected times, as we practice being the hands and feet of Jesus to our families, our loved ones, to our colleagues, our workers, our neighbors, for God's glory and to continue his work. God bless you. I look forward to being with you personally very soon as this continues to pass and we pray for one another. Thanks for tuning in today.